floors. So you will probably notice in the background behind me that I do not actually have walls up. Traditionally, floors are the last thing to go down. However, it is looking pretty likely that we're gonna be living here before the sheetrock goes up, <laughs> to say nothing of the myriad other projects on deck. So I decided that floors were gonna happen. Now, a word about floors. You can drop thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on a floor. I'm not doing that. Um, we looked at some auctions that take place within a couple of hours drive of us, and one of them had several lots of vinyl flooring. It was actually advertised as linoleum flooring, um, but turns out it's vinyl, so yay. That works, whatever. Um, and I'm in the process of getting the OSB, which you see on, behind me, ready to accept the vinyl flooring. So it's been about seven months since the house went up and we've been spending a lot of time here and working and doing plumbing and trying to get um, electrical ready to go in and building the hearth and placing the wood stove and all of the things. Um, so in the process of that, the floor, the OSB, gets quite dirty. So three cheers for the shop vac. I went over this strip, which is what I'm gonna work on first, first with the broom to try and save the filter a little bit. And uh, now I have gone over this whole length of the house and cleaned it up. And you can totally see before and after footage there, um, it's dirty. Now, another reason that I'm putting the flooring down now is that the longer we live and work on the plain OSB, the harder it's gonna to be to install flooring eventually because it's gonna start pitting, it's gonna start um, having all kinds of unevenness happen. You can actually see we're already starting a little bit of that, so I'm gonna fill that in, probably with some leftover mortar that I have. Um, because I do want the OSB to be as level as possible. So let's talk about the flooring that we got. We ended up with five rolls of this. It is a commercial grade vinyl flooring. I don't think it's loose lay, but I'm gonna treat it like loose lay because ultimately we spent about 550 to $600 on these five rolls of flooring, which are gonna cover our entire 2,000 square feet. And um, that's probably what I would spend or less on underlayment, which you're supposed to put down underneath this stuff. Um, but I'm treating it as underlayment. I don't care if it gets a little, you know, bruised and battered along the way, because it's not our forever flooring. It's okay. I spent years of my life growing up on floors just like this. These suckers are heavy. William thinks they weigh close to 500 pounds. I have um, already taken about 15 feet off this one. I've been manhandling it around. William and I got it in the house to start with using the hand truck and uh, a whole lot of muscle on William's part, a little bit on my part. But now I'm using this pry bar, Ugh. pry bar, it's pretty long. Thanks John, who gave it to us. Um, and I just have been putting this end in there because there's a cardboard tube in there and kind of prying it around where I need it to go. Now obviously it's round, so once I get it oriented correctly, I can roll it. Something that's gonna be kind of a pain in the neck is that um, because the pattern is showing, when I unroll it, it's gonna be wrong side up. So then I'm gonna to have to flip it over. Yay. I do have some double-sided tape coming and I'm gonna put patterns and strips of that in strategic locations. People might be screaming at this video, glue it, glue it, use flooring adhesive. So here's the thing, without an underlayment, the OSB is just gonna eat that glue over time. 
And of course, it's not gonna eat it up all the way, just enough to be a problem, so that if we ever decided to take it up, it would be a gigantic pain in the rear. So no, I'm not gonna use adhesive. I'll put the double-sided tape, obviously, down the seams, and I'll put it um, where I know that heavy appliances and things like that are going, so that when they get moved into place, they won't shift. Well, yes, it's heavy. I think the moral of the story here is take small bites. So I've doubled it back on itself and I have to go all the way over there. Um, and I'm just taking it in spurts and then I'll try and do that part that's doubled up right there afterwards. This is giving me problems. I need to straighten it out and put it flush with the wall and it wants to crease in the middle there. So I put the cardboard roll back in it and now I'm gonna come along behind it and just kind of work it out with my toes. You gotta be kind of creative when you're not built like a linebacker. Much better. So I've left my ends long just to give me some wiggle room. I did cut around where the hearth fits in. And I actually like this floor. I think it's gonna be really nice. Um, picture white sheetrock and that dark color and it's reflecting kind of nicely off the light from these big windows. So yeah, doesn't appear to have darkened the space any so far. It's hot. And I am trying to deal with these massive rolls of flooring. So I'm on my second strip of flooring now, which I'm so glad to say is shorter than the last one. Um, I'm going to turn the camera around here and show you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, because i got to be a little creative, as usual. Okay, so we dumped all of our massive rolls of flooring off the truck right there. The last one we took in whole. But we have to navigate the entry to our house right now through this kind of gangplank situation. And uh, it was challenging, even with both William and I working on it together. I'm by myself today, and I have to cut this six to 65 foot, seven inch uh, roll, so just about in half. And what I did was I unrolled it onto this tarp because, of course, our ground here is full of rocks and everything, and I don't really want to poke holes in the vinyl before it even gets in the house, <clears throat> if I can avoid it. So I've unrolled it, and I have marked it using this 100-foot um, tape measure. The nice thing about this is that it's extremely non-rigid. What's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Anyway it moves quite nicely to conform to these strange folds. However, being by myself, I need an extra hand. So what I'm using as an extra hand is my little handy dandy C-clamp here. I <clears throat> measured it out in a bite size distance over the hump there, and then I C-clamped it on the other side and measured it all the way here, and I marked it. Now I'm going to clamp this piece of one by on this side where my mark is. And then I can come along underneath it and make sure that it's relatively straight so that I can uh, mark it and then cut it to length outside. Then I'll roll it back up and then I will take it inside and unroll it. It's 32 feet and change. I'm gonna cut it to 32 feet, six inches, which will give me plenty of distance to have a few inches extra on each side. Now it doesn't look like it over here, but I hooked the tape to the outside of the wall stud. So that's an extra five and a half inches over there. So I'll, I should wind up with about two to three inches on each side, which is fine. This one I cut a bit long. However, I don't really want that much overlap. That's quite a bit of waste that I could put to use somewhere. I am not going to cut this contour outside. I'm just gonna cut it straight across and then I'll cut it when it's in place to go probably to, I don't know, right around there or so. 
I've got my clamp over there and I shimmed this side a little bit. Remember that this is a rough cut. It does not have to be perfect. So as long as it's ballpark plus a couple inches, it's fine if it's wavy and not straight. I do not care. So I'm gonna start cutting. Mwahaha. All right, I've got the cardboard tube from the first strip of flooring, and I'm gonna use that to help me roll up the second strip of flooring here. And uh, that'll provide a little more rigidity to the core when I stand it up on the dolly. I'm rolling it from this side so that it ends up right in front of our little gangplank there. And I can tip it up onto the hand truck and it should be a lot easier to just take it in the house. I'm revising my hand truck plan. I think I can just get it up, stand it up and flop it over and have it go in the right spot until I get inside. And then I can either use the hand truck or roll it where it's gonna be going. Now, you may have noticed that it had some debris on it since it was outside. I didn't sweep it off or anything outside because it just would have gotten more debris on it. So once I get it inside, I'm gonna go over this floor one more time with the shop vac and I'm gonna go over it as I unroll it so that I make sure that I don't have anything underneath it. <clears throat> Here you can see I've filled in some trouble spots with mortar, talked about that before, so that it's as smooth as possible. But again, you have to remember this floor is gonna be great for right now, but ultimately it's gonna become underlayment for something else. So it's okay if it's imperfect. Phase one is complete. Phase two, a little more challenging because I have to tilt it uphill. So what I'm actually gonna do is see if I can't hook some straps around the back of it and pull it this way and then get it up over this lip and then pull it some more until we hit the tipping point and then we should be good to go. I've got two straps, one at the back and one at the front. And basically I'm just taking turns moving it couple inches at a time until, like I said, we get over that tipping point. Mission accomplished. Ta-da! We have two strips of flooring down and the seams are together. Now, professionals would trim these factory edges because you can see that the pattern breaks a little bit and we got one kind of skinny board in between but this pattern is so dark that no one is ever going to see that irregularity of that tiny little board right there where the seam is now i have double-sided seam tape that i am going to use strategically on these seams however i am going to let the vinyl relax for a little while and make sure that it's comfy before i tape it um, and I still have some trimming to do up here, as you can see around the hearth and, uh, you know, some little bubbles to ease out. This heat, even though it is abjectly miserable, is actually perfect for laying this stuff out because it's relaxed and it's, uh, flattening out real nice. I also, you can kind of see some bumps there. So I got to make sure that there isn't any more debris underneath there. Um, and I don't want to use my seam tape prematurely and then find a little rock or something that I have to take out. So another reason to cool my jets and wait, which I'm not real good at, but that's okay. I do feel some debris right there. So I'm going to pull this up a little bit, figure out what's under there, get it out. And, uh, yeah, on to the next. I have my 50 foot long piece of vinyl in the house already. William helped me get it inside. As I mentioned before, these unroll upside down, so I've had to kind of flip it in stages. Right now I have it resting directly on top of the piece underneath, um, which is helpful because it helps me make sure that my edges are correctly aligned because I have to measure and cut it to fit in here. I want to do this as close as I can get to just one sheet because 
you want to really keep your seams to a minimum. And while it's really tempting to cut a seam in this doorway, for instance, um, the doorway is a really high traffic area. And so a seam there would wear out more quickly than I would like. So as you can see, we've got all kinds of closets and openings. And I do have to pull this toilet, which is not a terrible thing because we actually discovered that it's leaking. So I'll solve that mystery. Um, and then the full sheet will wind up somewhere in this neighborhood over here. So now I have to cut. And before I cut, I have to measure twice, three times, eight times, whatever. Since cuts are relatively permanent, I've decided to make a sketch for myself so that I can really double check. And you can see it's a good thing that I did that because I've already <laughs> recognized a couple mistakes here and there. But this really is the piece I'm working on now. So when it's cut, it has to look like this. It has to go inside, and this is not to scale at all, it's just a sketch. Um, this represents the pantry, which is right here. So I have my square to make sure that my edges come out correctly. Um, and then I measured from the corners as well, just to check, because that's the edge that I rough cut and it is decidedly not quite square. So um, just making absolutely sure that everything's okay before I actually make an incision. Okay, I have my sketch drawn out on the floor. Now remember that this piece that I'm cutting is directly over another piece and I certainly don't wanna cut through that. So I have this piece of one by scrap and I'm just gonna stick it underneath and move it along as I cut so that the utility knife blade goes into the wood instead of the floor underneath. All right, we are cut. No but going back now. So I have a kind of a limited work area here because of that wall and the hearth. So I am going to actually double this stuff back to give myself more room to make the other measurements. I've drawn out my cutout layout. It's a little weird. Measure twice, cut once. Um, I have left myself enough leeway, I hope, that if I made a minor mistake, it'll be okay. So once again, I'm gonna go along with the utility knife and I've got my piece of one by underneath so I don't cut the piece below. And then it should be time to see if I was successful or not. I really hope so, but we shall see. Well, it's down. And I have to say, I think my measurements worked out pretty darn well. I have a little bit of trimming here and there to do, but uh, I don't need to get the board stretcher out and that's the most important thing. Um, I have not obviously put this here because I haven't pulled the toilet yet. Once I pull the toilet, we'll lay that down and cut it. It's folded underneath there and uh, should work out really well. You know how the full rolls are really, really heavy and I've been getting help from William, bringing them in the house. Well, this last strip, I kind of thought I was gonna cut more off of it before I had to move it, but alas, I think I only trimmed maybe 50 pounds off it. So now I get to Archimedes my way into moving this enormous piece of vinyl across the house because it's going over there. So, let me show you the offending piece. All right, so here is the piece of vinyl. I've already cut it and trimmed it and blah, blah, blah. Um, my darling daughter decided to draw, but fortunately I could still read my measurements from yesterday, so that was okay. Um, it looks like that now. 
but I've rolled it up from both ends because I want to slide it over kind of in the middle here and then unroll it in both directions because I think that's going to work a lot better in this case to maneuver through that doorway and in this narrow space here. So here's what I've got going. These big yellow toe straps is what they are. I have been able to slip underneath both rolls. Um, so that is one side. I have another one of those and I'm gonna put it over here. And I am just kind of going to strong arm it um, side by side until it ends up over there. This was by far the craziest, hardest piece to maneuver in the house. And I was really glad that I had laid it out the way that I did because I truly do not think I could have set it up any other way and not had rips happen or um, been able to get it through the hallways. I'm getting ready to tape down portions of the flooring before I seal the seams. And I'll show you all about that process. But there are some troublesome bubbles that I need to get out, such as this one. So I'm going to put a strip of the double-sided tape that I have all the way underneath right there um, where it's bulging to take that bubble out. I have let it relax for a long time and it's just not cutting it. So I need to know where exactly I need to put the tape. I'm going to take my yellow crayon that I've used throughout this process and I'm going to mark on the sheet next to the one with the bubble where the tape will go and then I'll be able to have it um, adhere correctly. Now this one is a little bit weird because the bubble goes across here and then it goes up. So I'm actually going to mark two. I've folded back the offending piece of vinyl. I can see my marks and I can also see where the crease is on the piece of vinyl. Tape is down and I have this roller that is for seams that I got on Amazon. Um, I'm going to go over the tape with it before I take the um, adhesive layer off or you know the sticker layer off because I want it to be really secure to the plywood. Here we go, taking the tape off. This is name brand tape. Um, I wanted to make sure that it was gonna do the job, otherwise there's really no point. So I got Robert's brand, in case anyone's curious. Uh, we'll see what happens. It's really hard to get started to take it off. Um, there we go. There's probably a trick to that that I don't know, but I don't know it, so oh well. Upon closer inspection, I think that double bubble goes all the way across. So before I finish unrolling it, I'm gonna put some more tape down. That is working really well. My bubble appears to be no more. In addition to getting the bubbles out, I have to tape down the seams. So what I'm doing is folding back both pieces of vinyl, cutting off manageable strips of the double-sided tape right here. I'm going to go the entire length of the seam and I'm not pulling off the strips from the double-sided tape until I'm ready. And then what I'm going to do is start in the middle and I'm going to go that way and then I'm going to go that way and I'm going to peel off those strips one at a time as I go down to help make sure that these little trouble spots get uh, ironed out and don't build up somewhere along the way. These are the scissors I'm using to cut the tape. 
And I just discovered that olive oil not only takes off the tape residue, but makes it a lot harder for the tape residue to stick in the first place. All right, Clara is helping to get the double-sided tape exposed. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Good. That's tricky. You're doing perfectly well. Great. Lay down tape, take up adhesive layer, roll out, rinse, and repeat. In addition to the double-sided tape under the seams, I also used a seam sealer, which is a little bit like an adhesive. And you can see it did a really nice job of sealing those seams. As I run my finger over it, that's totally smooth. So um, the way that works is it comes in a can, kind of like paint thinner, it is extraordinarily flammable. You put it into an applicator bottle and then you just come along and um, put it in there. So it worked really well. This I just set down yesterday, so it's not surprising that you can see the difference there. Over time and with dust and all of that great equalizer, um, these seams are gonna totally disappear. And even if they don't, I'm not worried about it because by and large, looks pretty seamless, haha. -ha. The floor is done. Given the price and uh, my skill level, which it was amateur hour for sure, and the fact that I am blatantly ignoring professional flooring installation standards. I'm pretty pleased with it. I expect it to last at least a couple years. If I'd done it professionally, I would have gotten way more time out of it. I understand that. That's okay. I am pretty pleased and we'll see you with the next project. Thanks for watching. Want to say bye, Clara? Bye, Clara. <laughs>